Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Architects 3D Printing. In this week's project, we're gonna make the complete design of this cool cylinder seal that you can use for several uses. I'm gonna explain you how to design it. But before starting, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, clicking here in this little Architects 3DP icon. If you do it, you will help us growing and continue creating new content for special viewers like you. The idea for this project was actually inspired for our first Patreon supporter, Haider Jawad, who sent us a message through the Patreon messaging system. If you want to support our work as he does, having access to the final STL and work files appearing at the end of all our videos, early access to the videos and much more rewards, like being part of the projects, as you can see in this case, you can do it through the link in the description. If you do it, you will get the rewards and you will also make us really, really happy. Cylinder seals used to be small round cylinders, engraved with written characters and figure scenes or both, used in ancient times to roll an impression onto a two-dimensional surface, generally wet clay. They were invented around 3500 before Christ in the Near East, in Iran area or southern Mesopotamia, and were normally used as an administrative tool, a form of signature, as well as jewelry and as magical amulets. The first cylinder seals used to be typically made from hard stone or similar materials. In our case, instead of hard stones, we are gonna use, as you can imagine, PLA. And we can use it for a large variety of things. In this video, we are gonna make a tasty experiment that you will see later. But before, let's start with the design that is gonna have five parts. Create a base image and prepare it for the 3D production. Model in 3D the engraved cylinder. Make a hollow need for the axis. Model in 3D the handle, 3D print and assembly. So first step, we're going to create a base image for what we're going to use Adobe Photoshop, but you can use any other drawing software. We're gonna create a new file and give it a size of 1200 by 400 pixels, having a 3 to 1 proportion. To fill this white canvas, we're gonna use the original file of the cover photo from our web page and we'll drag it into the canvas. We'll adjust the size and create a layer mask where we are going to use the gradient tool to make it completely transparent in the left and right sides. This step is very useful to have a good result when we make it in 3D. Now we're going to press Ctrl U or Command U and we're going to completely desaturate the image. And next we'll press Command L to show the levels. Here we are going to move them to increase the contrast until we have more or less a black and white image. And next we are going to add a couple elements to the stamp. We'll add some text some icons and background graphics. Once you're happy with the result, we are gonna add a couple of more elements that will make the final result look better. And it will be a gradient from white to black in the top side of the image. Now we are going to duplicate it and press Command T to transform it and we are gonna place it right underneath, flipping it vertically like so. Now we are going to combine both layers and we are going to copy this element to the bottom side as well. And now yes, we are going to save our PSD file in case we want to edit it later, as well as exporting it in JPG for the following steps. Okay, so once we have the image ready, we are going to close this file and we are going to open the JPG we just generated with Photoshop to prepare it for the 3D modeling. Once here, we will duplicate the layer and we will press Command T for free transform and then we will right click on the image and select the option flip horizontally. After that we're gonna press enter to close the edit mode and we are gonna invert the colors. For that we're gonna press the command Ctrl I if you use Windows or Command I if you're on Mac OS. Right, so here we have our production image that we are going to name Lithophane Inverted and we are going to export it in JPG one more time. Now that we have finished the part 1 of the design, we are gonna go for the part 2, that is to model in 3D the engraved cylinder. I made the whole design using rhinoceros and also making use of some geometry formulas. That resulted a very long and complex process that finally gave us a result that was not very perfect. So I'm just going to skip this part with a time lapse and I'm going to explain you a much simpler way to do it having the same or even a better result in less than one minute. So once we have generated the JPG file, flipped it horizontally and inverted the colors, we are going to open our web browser and we are going to navigate to 3dp.rocks slash lithophane. I will let you the link down in the description as well. Once here we'll click on the images tab and we are going to drop here our image. 
Then we'll go back to the model tab and we are going to select the solid cylinder option. And then we'll go to settings to adjust them to something similar to what I have on my screen. It is very important to go with a maximum size of 150mm, a thickness of 2mm and we'll also delete the border. Now we'll come back to the model, we'll press refresh and have a look to the object to see if more or less the size is ok. And after that we'll click on download, or we download the file in STL that we are going to rename as Cylinder Solid. Here we have it and now we are going to open it with Rhino Zeros and first we are going to check the real scale. We want it to have a diameter of around 6 cm and if we measure the radius using the common distance in Rhino, we'll see that it's 25 mm. So we are going to scale it using as the origin point the point 000 and we are gonna click enter. Now as a first reference point we'll use the point 2500, enter and as the second reference point, the point 3000, pressing enter one more time. So here we have the cylinder scaled to the right size and now what we're gonna do is to make a hole in the middle for the axis. So we're going to use the command mesh cylinder and one more time for the center of the base of the cylinder we are going to use the point 000, a radius of 15 millimeters and a height slightly taller than the solid cylinder. Now we'll move it down and we'll use the command mesh boolean difference to subtract the cylinder we just created from the original solid cylinder. After this operation we'll have the final production cylinder that we can already print. So we'll save the file and we'll export the STL as well. Actually we're gonna import it in Cura and we're gonna start the print using this white PLA filament while we design the rest of the project. At this point we have completed the part 3 of the project and we are gonna go for the part 4 that will be modeling in 3D the handle of the device. I'm gonna go a bit faster over this part of the design since I'm going to upload my files so you can download them but basically we'll create kind of a universal handle trying to use as less material as possible and with the end of making it interchangeable so it needs to make easy the process of changing the cylinder stamps on it. Once we're happy with the design we'll export it in STL with the optimal orientation for the print and we're going to go ahead and slice it in Cura and print it in 3D this time using this nice red PLA that we recently bought. I'm going to upload 4 files to our webpage that you will find link down in the description and will be the next. The STL file of the whole assembly, the STL file of the cylinder ready to print, the STL file of the handle ready to print and the 3DM file of the final design ready to modify. Ok, so after a couple hours of printing, that's what we got out of the printers. And yes, I say printers in plural. You will know more about it in a few weeks. From one side we have the cylinder nicely printed in white PLA and from the other we got the handle that was printed with our new machine and came out absolutely perfect. Now we just have to assemble them together and check if it works. And yes, it fits just perfect. Ok, so once we have this device, what can we do with it? Well, we can use it as it was originally used in Mesopotamia, creating impressions in wet clay that we can later bake or let dry to make custom tiles. Or we can just make funny experiments such as custom crackers. I have never tested this device before and I don't really know if it is going to work, but we are gonna create a little experiment in which we are going to crush some cookies and mix them with a bit of milk, creating a moldable mass. Then we'll extend some of it in a flat surface, trying to create the perfect white canvas for our cylinder stamp. And once we got it, we'll roll our cylinder seal over it to see what happens. Wow, it does actually work! I didn't really thought it was going to work this great. Now we're going to try to bake the crackers without breaking them, and after a few minutes, we'll get this. Isn't it amazing? Also the cookies are so tasty. Ok, so what are you waiting to bring your own cylinder seals and make some experiments? Remember that you have the links for the downloads attached down in the description. If you enjoyed and learned with the video, please hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel clicking right here in this little icon that they will find in the bottom right corner. To stay tuned with progress updates and future videos, you can follow us on social networks at Architects3DP. Finally, if you want to support the channel, 
you can consider to support us on Patreon. From only $1 per month, what will make us extremely happy, and we'll also give you nice rewards that you can check in our Patreon page, navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking in the link in the description. Okay, so as always, see you guys in the next video.